Just choose to be gay way, to be naughty. How come you're not praying the they gay way? They choose to be gay to be it naughty. It seems like you have all and the now right being a homosexual. In place. Joe Rogan can be described as an eccentric, devoted, vastly knowledgeable, hyperactive person who channels all his energy into whatever he does. Most times, the American stand-up comedian, actor, sports commentator, and popular podcast host doesn't shy away from controversial issues and readily shares his views on topics most people aren't willing to talk about with his guests. Being a person who says it as it is, he is never afraid to take on anyone who doesn't share his views and blatantly calls them out on their BS. Take a chill pill as we take a look at 10 times Joe Rogan has lost his cool on live TV in this video. Nick DiPaolo. You have Hold to on. know this, so you're being willfully ignorant. No, I, I don't know. The, 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 Nick, Nick, I don't know. Okay. Nick DiPaolo is a writer, actor, stand-up comedian, radio personality, and podcast host who got into a heated argument with Joe Rogan on Rogan's podcast show. With Apollo holding firmly that Donald Trump is just as bad as a liar as every other politician out there, something Rogan didn't want to buy into. Joe Rogan then pulled up statistics showing that Trump averaged 15 inaccuracies or mistruths a day in 2018. DiPaolo contested these claims, stating that the mainstream media only started taking these statistics because they hated Trump. The two went on to fiercely debate the issue, with Rogan stating that his guest uses what he referred to as whataboutism in his defense of Donald Trump. When someone talks about something and instead of refuting it with facts, they go, yeah, well, what about Hillary? What about Bill? Bill did it too. Number nine, Jamie Kilstein. Let me just stop you right here. If you say like one more time, my f***ing head's going to explode. Oh, dude, I get comments like that. It's brutal. In an interview with writer, radio host, and comedian Jamie Kilstein, they argued about a very controversial rape joke comedian Daniel Tosh made when he anchored a live show in 2012, which led to a major outrage in the media. They went on about whether it was cool to make jokes about rape and how the topic could be managed in public. Kilstein, in his opinion, felt jokes about murder could be made because there isn't any form of stigmatization to the victims or the victim's family, a claim Rogan didn't buy into. He countered the claim by saying that murder is worse than rape because anyone who has been killed ceases to exist. Rogan then wondered why the society would accept a joke about murder but not about rape, citing that both instances are just for comedy and not about reality. Jamie Kilstein opined he would rather have someone in his life murdered than have them go through the trauma and hardship associated with rape for the rest of their lives, a statement that made Rogan call him crazy. Number eight, Brian Cowan. But I had never seen, I'd never been that close to a, pro, a, a former pro football player. The dynamic trio of Joe Rogan, Brandon Schaub, and Brian Cowan have done tons of shows and podcasts together. However, in an episode of Joe Rogan's podcast, Rogan and Schaub teamed up against Brian Cowan and jokingly called him out on his BS. Cowan claimed that after being bullied for a year at one point in his life, he would no longer take any more of it from anyone. Cowan made threats to anyone who dared to bully him, which Rogan and Schaub simply said were ridiculous. They made a mockery of his tough guy fakehead and said he could only make those claims because he was around people who allowed him to say things like that and not poke fun at him. Number seven, Adam Conover. It is a choice, right? I mean, if you're I, choosing no. to add hormones to a child's body, that's a choice. And it was no surprise when things got heated between Joe Rogan and comedian, actor, television host, and writer Adam Conover. Conover argued that transgender people usually exhibited their gender at an early age and suggested that parents should take note of this development and help their kids embrace the gender they tend to associate with. This point got Rogan furious, and he stated that it isn't in the parent's place to decide for the kids what gender they should embrace at an early age. He further argued that the hormone therapy Conover suggested is inappropriate for children because they were simply too young to know for sure what gender they would like to be. On the other hand, Conover believed that therapy would take away the need for any late surgery in the child's life. Rogan then countered him by pulling up statistics that showed that the surgery doesn't affect the suicide rate of transgender people. Number six, Joey Diaz. I'm gonna let it fly. You gotta let it fly. Okay, and I'm sorry. No, no, no. You, just so is, you know. No! You be sorry. At a time when people are mindful of what they joke about on air, Joey Diaz, a Cuban-American stand-up comedian, actor, and podcaster, is unapologetic about the things he says on air or his choice of words when he addresses certain people. So when he was a guest on Joe Rogan's podcast, 
It wasn't a surprise that the two didn't get on well with each other. Diaz blamed his apparent lack of regard for what is considered as a controversial joke or inappropriate language on his upbringing, stating that he grew up using those words and is trying his best to avoid offending anyone, but felt it's a little too late for him to change, much to the amusement of his host, Joe Rogan. Number five, Milo Yiannopoulos. It was this huge story whoa, that I whoa, broke. Whoa, hold on. Then, I'm sorry, stop, I'm going to stop, I'm stop. Okay. Gonna stop okay. Joe Rogan hosted Milo Yiannopoulos, a British far-right political commentator, polemicist, writer, and public speaker, on his show's episode. The two got talking about morals, Christianity, myths, and general beliefs of right and wrong and kept interrupting each other as they didn't agree on a lot of things. This debate got even more intense when Milo claimed the sense of right and wrong is founded on the basis of Christianity. Rogan wouldn't have any of it and kept shouting BS at Milo as he stated his views. Milo also said that absurd cultures who practice in New Guinea, which are being condemned in Europe and the rest of the world, are due to the fact that their culture wasn't based on Christianity. Rogan didn't agree with his guest when he also said religion tells us about ourselves and our heritage as humans. Rogan opined that those are myths and that humans have brought us to today, not religion. In his defense, Milo accused Rogan of being outrageous on the topic and said Rogan was too intelligent to be so dismissive of something so important to the human race. Rogan retaliated by calling Milo adorable and cute and said he has the right to have his views but shouldn't suggest that we owe our civilization and moral codes to Christianity. And what's the danger of them right. and what can combat it and what could not have you done all this or no, do you so take think... this flippant opinion candace owen is an american author commentator and political activist she said she didn't believe humans are the cause of climate change and her beliefs were based solely on what she felt and not necessarily on the amount of information she had on the subject matter rogan responded by saying it was wrong for her to form an opinion on such an issue without having sufficient knowledge about what the topic is about because global warming is an about what anyone feels or doesn't feel. She admitted that she felt that way about the topic because of how much the United States had spent on climate change and how the issue is being politicized, taking a stance with the way Donald Trump has dealt with the issue. Before long, Joe Rogan pulled up a report that states that humans caused climate change, saying that 97% of scientists who have researched on the issue say that it is true. He then suggested that she should be more educated about the topic before making such a stance because of the kind of influence she has in society. The reason Joe Rogan was so agitated by her beliefs can be traced to the fact that he is big proponent of the fact that human activities have affected the planet negatively, and we should be committing to fixing it. Number 3. Mark Gordon, Brian Dunning when Joe Rogan hosted Dr. Mark Gordon on his show in 2014, the medical director of education at Access Medical Laboratories claimed that a supplement named glutathione could numb the effects of alcohol. Dr. Gordon shared a story on how a young man who was feeling dizzy and sick from excessive drinking took this supplement and was clear as a bell after 30 minutes of taking the supplement. He further narrated how the guy went partying the next day and couldn't get drunk. Rogan could only stare in disbelief and wish he knew more about the subject to dispute the claim claims made by the doctor. Even when Joe Rogan felt the drug would only give people false hope, he thought it sounded like a smart thing to try. The interview with Dr. Mark Gordon sparked great reactions from the public, and Brian Dunning was the first person to call Joe Rogan out for not being able to call out the doctor's BS when he was on the show. He said that even a novice in the medical field would know that it was too good to be true. Dunning further put it to Rogan that he should have known that what the doctor claimed was against every reasonable established science and potentially deadly advice. Dunning was furious that Rogan didn't call his guest out on his BS, claiming that he owed it to his fans and listeners to do so. Joe Rogan, in his defense, simply stated that he didn't have any obligation toward his listeners, saying he couldn't call someone out like that since he isn't an expert in the field and no one claimed he was. Number 2. Eddie Bravo and, I love uh, science. I don't want to fight. I want to laugh about it. I'm an idiot. I believe in flat earth. I'm crazy. You would agree that the flat earth theory is one of the biggest conspiracy theories in the world. So when Joe Rogan, Brandon Schaub, and martial art instructor, podcaster, musician, and stand-up comedian Eddie Bravo discussed the topic, the resulting argument didn't come as a surprise. Eddie Bravo stood firmly on his belief that the world is flat and that round earth pictures taken by a Japanese satellite were fake to him. Rogan pointed out that the pictures were taken every 10 minutes from 22,000 miles away and asked why 
why they would bother to put up fake downloadable pictures in high resolution at such intervals. When asked why there wasn't any picture of a flat Earth, Bravo agreed, but stated that the ones that showed round Earth were fake and claimed that all space agencies were in on the global lie. Rogan and Schaub were in disbelief of Bravo's blatant disapproval of the facts in front of him and asked what the space agency stood to gain by telling this lie. Number one, Steven Crowder. See, this is where well, I was saying, it was, I don't hold care on, about don't this. interrupt me, you. F you should know better than to start an argument about marijuana with Joe Rogan. And Steven Crowder had to learn that the hard way. The American Canadian conservative political commentator, comedian, and host of YouTube and podcast show Louder and Crowder tried to discuss the potential harm marijuana could have on its users. Rogan quickly attacked him and resorted to screaming and calling him names. The pair went hard at each other and repeatedly interrupted each other. Crowder believed Rogan and his assistant were teaming up against him, with Jamie pulling up articles and facts that only seemed to favor Rogan's arguments as the host tried to humiliate him. Crowder was so annoyed and eventually spent so much time defending his claims and views that he ended up missing his flight. So guys, that's going to be it. Kindly like the video and share your thoughts about the video in the comment section.